Yo, what's going on guys? Zebs here bringing you my first tutorial on the Mindless channel. Um, so I thought this week I would do something special for you guys for my introduction to Mindless. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I've been designing for about three or four years and I've been doing tutorials for about a year now. So I thought I would make some tutorials for Mindless and things like that. So this first week I will be doing a basic grunge render. Um, so I'll show you how to do all this stuff and it will also include four materials which will be you guys will be able to download in the description down below so uh, there you go if you guys want to copy me exactly again the materials are down there um, so basically the logo I'm using this week will be Odin's um, just why not so I'll be showing you these spikes some spikes and just basic layouts of um, some cool things and whatnot so let's get started so um, I'm just gonna remove everything here so I just have the bare bones um, logo so I haven't done anything to it yet all I've done is made an extrude so to start off with we're gonna set the movement which in this case would be the depth we're gonna set it to 60 now this will add a good thickness to the render so it's not too thin or not too thick so once we've done that what we're going to do next is we're gonna go into the caps uh, caps is basically a way to make it where the outline or the edges of logos aren't so sharp and not looking too good what this does is it made it a lot smoother and things like that on the edges so it looks a lot nicer so that's the first step you should do for every logo so if you have any experience with 3d you know this the basic stuff um, but if you're new to cinema 4d or new to designing welcome to the community and um, there you go so the next part what we're going to do next is as you can tell here it's kind of boring that the logo is just facing us. Both of these parts are just facing us. It's very boring. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to spice it up a little bit, add some personality to it, and we're going to kind of um, rotate it a little bit so it's a little bit more randomized and whatnot. So what I'm doing right here is I'm moving the axis without moving the logo. So here, let me move it back to the where we're starting. So as you can see here, if I try to rotate this right here, if I got the rotation tool and rotated it, it's going to rotate around that axis that I have it placed. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to click this L uh, axis type thing, this little axis preview. And what this will do is it will allow you to move the axis without moving the actual extrude. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the center of the left side of the logo. Um, and then once we've done that, we're going to push F2 on our keyboard, and we're going to center it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of, you know, get it as best you can. We're just going to kind of center it a little bit. So this is close, you know, it's good enough for me. So once we've done this, we're going to click it again, because if we try and rotate it with this selected, it's going to do a weird, like, you can kind of do some cool stuff with this, like it, yeah, move, yeah, yeah, as you can see. So once we've done that, we're going to then click inside this blue circle and just drag it to the top left and that's gonna rotate it uh, this way so once we've done that we're gonna do the same thing to the right side here um, so move the axis to the center F2 and then drag it back um, doesn't have to be perfect just good enough to uh, rotate it so once we've done that we're gonna do the same thing here but we're gonna kinda rotate it just a little bit to a different angle to something like this so as you can see now it gives the logo a little bit more personality and more options to work with it if you wanted to edit something so I'm just going to kind of do this and uh, once we've done this I'm just going to net then rotate it back to something like this so now the logo is facing upward and it's in a ring it's in random angles so now this gives us a lot more options to edit however we want instead of the logo just facing us straight forward so once we've done that once we have our basic logo layout you could say uh, we're going to add our first material which will be the primary material for this render um, very good material it'll be in the download if you guys want it this is what it looks like um, and what this does is well it's a material so it texturized the render so it's not just a blank white look so once we've done that we're going to add a nice little outline to the logo so to do this we're going to go into this flower looking thing with cubes and we're going to get two atom rays since the reason we're getting two is because there's two extrudes so once we've done that we're going to drag the duplicated extrudes that we just copied and pasted into each atom ray and this will cause a cool looking outline with spheres on the edge of every well a, a sphere on every edge 
So to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to set the cylinder radius and the sphere radius to 1. This will make everything balanced and all that whatnot. Um, so once we've done this, I'm just going to move this back to the center because it's going to bug me. So I'm just going to kind of boom. Good. All right. So once we've done that, what we're going to do next is add, well, we're actually going to rotate these a little bit now. So it's not perfectly lined up with the logo. So we're just going to kind of do the same exact thing we did with the logo, but with this Adam Ray now. So we're going to kind of just randomize it a little bit, not too much. And we're just going to do the same thing here. And I actually want to bring this one up just a touch. Uh, let me bring it down, actually. Again, guys, um, this is all personal preference. So if you want something like, if you want the Adam Array complete in front of the logo, go for it, dude. It's your render. So once we've done this, we're going to add our secondary material, which will be the Adam Array material. Uh, this is a kind of a little bit darker, well, not darker, but a little bit brighter type thing. Um, it's not the same material, so it gives it a little bit more texture. If I render it out, you guys will be able to see that it's a little bit brighter, and you, it's noticeable. So when we add our color corrections, and well, when you guys add your color corrections and whatnot, you're still going to be able to see this outline. It's not going to blend in with the logo, as it should. You should be able to see the outline. So actually, I'm going to move this one down a little bit more. I don't like how much it pops out, and I'm going to rotate it to the left a touch. There, that'll do. Um, so once we've done that, what we're going to do next is start by adding our Reaper X. Um, this, this render does require Reaper X, so if you don't have it, you can uh, go and buy it if you guys want. Um, so once we've done that, we're going to click F5 on our keyboard, and this will bring you a bunch of different perspectives. Um, so we're going to go into the front perspective. So to go in here, you could click this uh, box here, this top right here, or you could just middle, klaus, middle mouse click here and that'll take you to it. So once we've done that, I'm just going to deselect these so I can get a, a good understanding of where the logo is. So I'm just going to get my freehand tool right here and we're just going to kind of draw around the logo. Um, so something like this. Doesn't have to be perfect obviously and I'm kind of rushing it just for the sake of the tutorial um, but take your time on it so it looks nice. Um, so once we've done that, we're just going to go plugins with Reaper X drag well I guess it's just one spline so drag the one spline into it and as you can see it's a little bit too thick and there's just too much going on here so we're gonna kind of dumb it down a little bit make it make less uh, little splines going around so we're gonna start off by going in general strands set this to one and that will start off by minimizing it because this is timesing it multiple times how much ever you did and and then we're gonna turn down the distance well you can if you want but you, you can see what it does here um, so I'm just going to keep it something like this, and we're going to turn down the radius. This is the thickness of it, and um, if you guys want, 2 is a good radius for me, in my opinion. And we're just going to kind of I'm gonna move this axis into the center. Um, it's a good habit to get into, just kind of centering it things. makes it easier to rotate if you do plan on it. So I'm just going to drag it into the logo, and then we're going to rotate it down to kind of match the logo angle. So we're just going to kind of do something simple like this. Nothing too advanced, you know, just there you go. So once we've done this, um, now that we're this far, we're going to start adding our secondary materials, I like to call. Now, secondary materials would be considered colors such as like lavas, gels, just different colors than the primary, which generally I consider the primary to be something as a neutral color. So black, white, gray, uh, grunge, stuff like that. So... Now that we have our secondary color, we're just going to add our secondary one to the Reaper X we just did. Um, so once we've done this, as you can see, if I was to render it out, it would look very bad and not good at all, as you can see here. So what we're going to do to fix that is um, we're going to select, click the material so it's highlighted, so it has an orange outline of it. And we're going to go into the projection, set it to cubic, and then seamless that will cause the texture to go cubic, which goes all the way around the thing. Seamless, if you have a smaller texture, it's not going to just duplicate the texture. It's going to try and blend it a little bit better, kind of stretch it. It's kind of a little bit hard to explain, um, but yeah, there's that. Just make sure you always do that with your materials. It's important. Um, so once we've done that, um, we're actually going to add a special type of tool to the primary render here to add a little bit more depth into it. Um, now, this is good for displacement. A lot of people, actually, I don't know if a lot of people know about this or not, 
but um, basically what this will do is it will make the displacement a lot better and it'll look more natural. Um, so we're going to set, go into the caps, set the type to quadrangles, and we're going to set regular grid, check that, and set the width to 14. Now you can do comparisons with and without it on um, grunge materials and you'll be able to tell the difference. So yeah, so for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. Just trust me on this. Um, so once we've done this, now we have our Reaper X, our logo set up, and whatnot. Now, now we're going to start off by adding um, some spikes to the thing. Um, so we're just going to get a cone in this blue cube here. Get a cone. And we're just going to make it a little bit thinner. So we're going to go into um, bottom radius. And we're just going to turn it down so it's kind of like a, a thinner bottom radius. And once we've done this, we're just going to drag it into the render. Make, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and then we're just going to kind of position it to a more natural kind of look instead of just pointing straight up. So once we have it where we want it generally, in the general spot anyway, we're just going to kind of rotate it into a direction. So I guess in this case, we're going to be pointing it this way. And that will give it a good, like, natural look to it instead of just pointing up, down, like, you know, um, so something more natural like this and this one we're just going to add our red red material here and we're just going to do this all like on different parts of the render so that it has a nice look to it a nice natural look as I keep saying so I'm just going to kind of have one over here now and avoid having things facing the same way like this looks kind of weird having both of these spikes looking the same way so we're just going to kind of rotate it to a different angle now um, and we're just going to kind of keep doing this a couple more times um, so there's not too much of it, nor too less of it, I should say. Uh, I'm actually going to make this one a little higher. So something like this, um, try avoid it having, like, try avoid having the, uh, spikes clipping through the logo. Um, so, yeah. So once we've done that, as you can see, we have some spikes going. Uh, we're going to add one more, just one more. Um, let's see, where should we have this one? Let's have this one on the top. Let's see here. Let me get this in a good position to do so. Boom. And then I'm going to rotate it like so. So now that we have our spikes kind of in natural places, you could say. Um, now that we have that, we're just going to now start off by doing a little bit more red things. So we're going to add some spheres just to give it a little bit more detail um, in the background that you can work with in Photoshop. So we're going to make the sphere a little bit smaller. We're just going to drag it behind the logo. And we're just going to add the red material. Cubic. Seamless. Make sure you always do that. Control C, Control V to duplicate it. And just kind of have it something like this, I guess. This will, this could work, actually. And uh, the last step, what we're going to do next is we are going to add some spikes in the middle here. Coming, like, popping out. So to do this, we're just going to do the same exact thing. We're going to get a cone, uh, turn down the bottom, ra the bottom radius, something like this. And we're just, just going to duplicate it, and I'm just going to kind of rotate it and make some a little bit smaller and some a little bit bigger. Um, doesn't matter too much about the bottom due to the fact that it's going to be covered up from the logo. We're just going to have the points showing, so you don't have to worry about how the bottom looks, just the top. Uh, so, boom. And then we're going to have some kind of um, in front of the others and things like that. So boom, I'm going to make this one a little bit taller. So I'm just going to kind of do something like this. Now let me rotate it. Move it to the left a little bit. But something like this. And um, once we've done this, we're just going to now select them all. And we're going to bring it into the render. So to do this, we're just going to make it a little bit smaller. And then start rotating it into the, uh, the render. To something like this. Uh, let me um, let me turn off the camera so we can go to the side view here. We get a little bit easier to um, position and whatnot. So we're gonna drag this out. Let's see here, drag it up, and then duplicate it. Do the same exact thing. Drag it down like that, and then kind of maybe rotate it a little bit so it's in a different uh, angle, and whatnot. Um, so I guess something like this could work. Um, now, you could obviously make this look a lot better, do, but due to the sake of the tutorial, uh, I'm just going to rush it a little bit. So, basically, once we've done that, we're just going to add um, 
our red materials like so um so basically that's pretty much it for this render um you could do a lot of cool things with this i have some really cool ideas for this but um hope you guys enjoyed my first tutorial um give me some feedback on what you liked and what you did not like so i can improve um so i've been your host today zebs um if you liked it leave a comment down below leave a like and comment down below i've been your host today and i'm out peace